Hey everybody and welcome to another Wine Down Wednesday. I am your host, Brittany Daniel. And so today I have switched it up and I'm going to be drinking a uh, Pinot Noir from a really good brand called True Root at Target. It's not in all Targets, but it's $5, it's amazing. Not sponsored, but cheers. So on my YouTube channel here, I polled you guys and asked what Wine Down Wednesday video that you guys want to see next. And today's topic was chosen by you guys, so thank you fam. And if you wanna be a part of my online community, my fam, where you get to input and chime into our content here on this channel, then all you have to do is hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and use hashtag fam down below so that I know it's real. And that's it. So when I poll or when I post on my community page or I post on my timeline on YouTube, then you have the access to go ahead and vote and become a part of the channel and a part of my fan. But in today's video, we are going to be talking about a topic that I've been hearing a lot, seeing posts on social media, and basically that's adult friendships. Okay, so the very first thing I kind of want to dive into because I get a lot of these questions like, how do I make new friends as an adult? How do you, um, you know, navigate the friendship world outside of high school and college? Now, I will say that most of my adult relationships, most of them did stem from college. However, I have met people along the way that I will talk about here in this video and tell you guys how we connected and how that friendship blossomed over time as an example. But the biggest thing is to go out, have a good time, have low expectations for friends, but high standards. And what that means is that just because you meet somebody, you guys hit it off, exchange numbers, does not mean the next day you guys are BFFs or the next day or the next weekend you guys are linking up for drinks or things like that. Like if that happens, cool. But I really, when I meet people, I go off of vibes, I go off of energy. I really try to connect with a like-minded people. So what I do in the interim as I'm getting to know somebody, maybe at a party or maybe at an event, the first thing is I go off of your energy and your vibe because I'm the type of person that likes to enter a room. I like to speak to everybody. That brings people's guard down so they know that I'm not threatening. I don't like to sit in the corner and watch everybody for a long time. Personally, I understand how that's some people's characteristic trait and that's how some people kind of fill out the room. But what I notice is if you interact with somebody that doesn't have a personality like me that already kind of consciously knows like let me put everybody's guard down let me be out there and goofy what it does is it makes you very standoffish or you could be perceived to be standoffish like people that complain about their resting face you can change that you can smile yes that's who you are but you can interact with people in a different way or if you want to be the catalyst to that change then just speak to people say hi introduce yourself understand especially as women bring that guard down that you're non-threatening and basically toss out your ego another thing is pay attention to what people talk about and also pay attention to what people do like how they talk about their significant others how they talk about other friendships you want to make sure that the people that you want to engage with or the people that you're bringing in to your energy actually match your energy and match you as well like if I heard girls conversation or conversing about being scammers or scammer activity, I'm not going to befriend that girl personally. Nothing against her. Not saying that she's a horrible person and this, this, that, and the third, but I can't let people's drama and what they choose to do with their lives trickle into mine. And I understand people don't believe this, but I believe birds of a feather flock together. Like not saying that everything that you do, your friends are going to do. But what I will say is if Keisha still do you either okay with that or you still too and so i just i make sure that you know the people that i choose to communicate with and get to know we have the same energy same vibe and we also value the same thing and we have the same mindset and mentality about life and if you pay attention and if you're really connected with who you are then a lot of that stuff you'll you'll just kind of find naturally but if you're having a hard time then bring your guard down, go in places and smile, and just pay attention to the energy and the type of people that you converse with. Find like-minded people and make a connection. This is not a relationship. This is not a boyfriend-girlfriend situation. Like nobody owes you a whole bunch of their time nor their energy. What I like to do is honor 
um, that person with where they are. Being very aware and open that we're all adults and that we have our own lives going on and everybody is the star of their own show and life and movie. So what I mean by that is if you have friends who are now getting married or having kids, then your relationship is going to change. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to you know, change drastically or that person's not there for you anymore, but you have to be aware and, and mature enough to understand that there are gonna be people in their lives now that come before you. You may have been the best friend in college that you could call all the time. I, I have a best friend, his name is Zoe. We have been friends since high school. When he is in a relationship or when he has a new girlfriend, I understand that I can't hit him up all the time. He understands vice versa. If I have a dude, he can't be calling me at long hour, all hours of the night. And it's not to disrespect our friendship. It's actually honoring it so that we don't make the other person that they're in a relationship with uncomfortable. Because that's my friend, I think about his life and what's going on. My friends that are married or with children, they can't pick up the phone all the time or go out and do last minute things because they need a babysitter. And it's just me having the awareness and understanding and knowing that. Or if I have a house party, it's okay if they bring their significant other. I always extend that, that uh, invitation to a significant other saying like, hey, you don't just have to, you know, be by yourself with me. Now, if they choose to come solo, that's on them. But I always like to extend that olive branch and that invitation out to the spouse. And it makes them more comfortable. And it also makes them more prone to be like, oh, no, it's okay. You can go without me versus like, why are you always going out without me? It is being very aware and, and being very um, conscious and open to your friends' new life and their new roles and their new experiences. Like, I have friends who are married with children. I have friends who live in different parts of the country. So we, you know, are on two different time zones. Just being very understanding and like not being butthurt if they can't be there for me when I feel like I need it. Also, being aware that because people have things going on and they have different lives, before you unload your baggage or you come at them with what you got going on, see if they're even in the space to receive it. Something that me and Deara do, I talked about this on my podcast, Hey Wildly Deara, girl, if you're watching. One thing me and Deara do is we say, hey, I got something going on. Do you, can you talk? And basically, or do you have the energy to put this on? or take on what I'm about to like say to you. Like when you answer the phone, just don't be like, hey girl, Ronnie, blah, 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 and fire hose your friend with information. Like check in, like, hey girl, I got some stuff going on. Are you in a good place to receive what I'm about to unload on you? Because believe it or not, the energy that you have going on in your life, if you have drama, if you have baby daddy issues, and that's all you keep calling your friends over and over for, that energy is draining. So you need to see if your friend's even in a good space personally to take all of or any of your energy on. And also, if they say no, to honor that. Like, I don't always answer my phone for my friends. They don't always answer their phone for me. But what I do hit them up was with a text like, hey, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Or, hey, I'm really not in the mood right now. Or, hey, um, is everything okay? So I make sure that they're okay. And then I let them know and affirm, like, you know, I can't really talk right now. And they honor that and they respect it and vice versa. So give yourselves and friends room to have other friends, go out and, and do other things. Like I was listening to this thing on Instagram where it was like, I hate when my friends have other friends. Why would you want to be somebody's bloodline? Like their only lifeline, like something happens to you, they don't have any other friends or I would, I don't, believe in putting all your eggs in one friendship basket and teach their own like some people grow up in one space where they have their one best friend and that's great for them but i just i feel like life is so much better when you have a plethora of different friends if one friend isn't there you can call another all of my friends are all over the, the united states i know everybody's situation will be different but i don't know i don't i, I have no jealousy when it comes to my friends making friends if anything, it makes more opportunity for me to meet like-minded people because I know that if somebody Brittany brings around or somebody Jasmine brings around or somebody that Nadine brings around, I know that nine times out of ten they're good people. So there's like already a filter that's done and then you never know that you can establish friendships with your friend's friends. Just saying.
A way to show up in your relationships is to check in on your friends. Again, I have little expectations with my friends. Like I don't sit there and be like, oh my gosh, girl, you didn't call me. Da, da, da. But I will notice like, hey, I haven't heard from so-and-so in a while. So instead of me being mad that she didn't hit me up, I check in on her because maybe she's going through something or maybe Zoe's going through something. So I always try to check in with my friends. Like be the friend that you want people to be to you and don't always be so ego driven that they're doing something to you nine times out of ten and this is another thing i don't know where this started but if you find yourself being jealous of your friends or you find that you have friendships that people are jealous of you you need to rethink those relationships you need to really rethink like do those relationships serve you and it's one thing that like, say if you wanna be pregnant and your friend gets pregnant and you're a little envious and you check yourself, that's very different from being jealous and being mad and being petty and being like, oh, why is everybody getting X, Y, and Z and I don't da, 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 da. Like that's not the energy that you want, sis. That's not the energy you want to put out. That's not the energy you want back. So make sure you watch your energy and what you say and what you do before you go check in other people. It bothers me when I hear people say, oh, but she did X, Y, and Z. But she did X, Y, and Z to that person and she treated her baby's father like this. And she, like watch people how they are. Like don't expect people to be different for you. You, you know what type of person that was. Why would you invite them into your life and your world? Take responsibility on who you allow into your life. It's okay to set boundaries with your friends and tell them no. It's okay to for them to cancel because something came up. Um, I will say like, don't be, don't allow yourself to stay in a situation that no longer serves you. If you feel like you've done all those things, you've poured into people, you've shown up for people and you don't see that same exchange in return because a friendship is a two way street. You're not using each other, but it's definitely a two way street. So if you don't see that, then that person's just not for you. Then you need to maybe reevaluate that friendship because it should not be you pouring, 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 or them pouring, 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 and getting nothing in return. Like eventually, if you see that the friendship is no longer serving you, you could cut that off. Or I'll give you another perfect example. If a friend crosses a line that is like a line that should never be crossed, i.e. sleeping with your significant other, i.e. putting their hands on you, i.e. Um, you know, just going, crossing a line that you just know like there's no going back. I had a friend who, after we fell out, she DM'd my boyfriend at the time and made up all these lies about me. That was a line that as much as I loved her and as much as I wanted to be her friend and try to work it out, it was a line I could not cross. So I was like, you just went, you took it somewhere I would never take it. So honoring your space, honoring your boundaries, honoring who they are to you. And also just because you're no longer friends doesn't mean that they can go off and run off at the mouth about your business and doesn't mean that you can go run, up, run your mouth about their business. Like be classy on all levels, on all occasions, no matter what goes on. And then the last thing is just to have fun. Like, cultivate these relationships over the years, link up, chat, talk, catch up, um, fly out to see each other. If you guys live in two different locations, go visit your friend and have a weekend. Them come visit you and have a weekend together. Like nurture your friendships, check in. It is, you cannot plant a seed and expect it to grow without water. You have to nourish and pour into your friendships just as much as you would like them to pour into you. But I hope you guys enjoyed this Wind Down Wednesday and learned a little bit more about adult friendships. Again, have fun, take it easy. Don't make it too hard, or too complicated, too difficult. Um, and then let's talk down below. Let me know down below in the comments, have you guys had hard friendships? Are you guys, did this video help you? Is it easier to make friendships that you're older? Is it harder? Let me know down below. All right, I love you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.